Welcome to Small Arms Firearms, where we master the art of the zero hit factor. Today on Small Arms Firearms, we're going to discuss why you might want to get into competitive shooting, how you can get into competitive shooting, where you can learn, train, and what the cost maybe of that would be. First of all, why would you do competitive shooting? It's fun. It's just a fun competitive sport to get you outside, sometimes inside, to compete against yourself mostly to begin with. Not only that, it's a social environment where you can meet people that have the same hobbies and interests as you. Not only is it fun, it's also a great way to become more proficient with your firearms. Being more proficient means that if it ever came time to where you had to use a firearm in an adrenaline-filled situation, you'll be more prepared for that since you've already been doing it every weekend maybe. And lastly, you can invest as much time as you want into this. It isn't a team sport, so you don't have responsibilities to a section or a club maybe to show up to every match. You can just play on your own time and have fun and enjoy it. Now, to give just a brief overview of what you can do, there are multiple leagues to look into. USPSA, IDPA, two and three gun matches, there's outlaw matches. Um, it, it just kind of look at the rules on their website, see what maybe interests you the most. I would say the most popular competitive shooting league would be USPSA. Now, lately, they've had a lot of states and sections that are no longer running sanctioned USPSA matches because of some drama that's been unfolding at their leadership level. Uh, if you want more information on that, just Google Ben Stoger drama and you, you'll be able to find it. Now, IDPA is going to have similar, your safety rules are about the same as USPSA, but it's more oriented towards defensive pistol shooting. So you're gonna be drawing from concealment. Um, there's a little bit more finicky rules as to how you can do your mag changes and things like that. Um, your magazine capacity and like you can't have a mag drop to the ground with any cartridges still in it. So maybe if you're just starting out, you find Outlaw Matches or USPSA, something that's a little more simple and you're not having to worry about multiple things and you can just go there to have fun and enjoy your first few matches. Two gun or three gun matches are going to be very similar to USPSA, but you just use an extra gun. So the safety rules are about all the same, um, but for each stage you will use a minimum of two guns. So whether that's pistol, rifle, or shotgun on that stage. Two and three gun can be a ton of fun. I love doing matches like that. Just be prepared that jumping into that right away is going to be more upfront cost as you have to have two or three guns which means different cartridges to shoot. You're either shooting shotgun, rifle, different magazines, mag carriers. So that's something you have to be prepared off the bat if that's where you wanna jump into the competitive shooting world. Now, outlaw matches. Don't let the name fool you, it's not something crazy. It just means that it's not sanctioned by a specific league. It's usually following the same safety rules as something like USPSA, but the stages can be designed however they like. There are strict rules on how you can design a stage, how many shots on a target they can take, and what the divisions are, uh, whether that's carry optics, production, limited, limited optics, open guns. So, and generally it's more condensed. Uh, the last one I did, they had PCC, pistol caliber carbine, as a division. Then you had iron sights, and then you had red dots. That was it. So you could be running an open gun with a red dot and still going against people that have their EDC micro compact with a red dot. That's how the divisions were made up. It's a lot of fun. You could do a stage that has 50, 60 shots in it just because that's how they designed them. And that's why it's called Outlaw. There's nothing crazy about it. It's just not signed up for a league. Now you don't get points towards anything as in like a ranking system, uh, but it still goes on practicescore.com and it's just fun. And finally, once you figure out a league that you want to shoot in, 
Make sure you go to their website, whether that's USPSA, IDPA, and check to make sure that you don't have to pay for a membership. If you want to be ranked and actually have your scores recorded and have a classification, then you will need to pay for a membership. Level one matches, which are a majority of your local matches, you actually probably won't need to have that membership ID number, but it's nice to be able to get classifications. Okay, another question I get is, what gun should I use? Well, if you already have one, probably that one. Whether it's just your everyday carry or something you have in your house that you use for defense, that's always the best place to start. It's the firearm you plan to either use to defend yourself and it's always better to have more practice with it. For your first matches, you don't need to have some kind of race gun. Just get out there and have fun. You're not gonna get first place. Maybe you will, but I doubt it. it the point is to go out there and learn and have fun and see if this is a sport that you really want to keep doing. And then maybe you can go buy some nice fancy pistols. Or maybe you have nice fancy pistols already at home. Go for it. But I've seen numerous people out there with their carry pistol where they even carry it some, sometimes appendix inside the waistband just because now the USPSA will allow it. And now this is a little small and with the optic on it, it would put you into the carry optics division. So what? Have fun with it. Maybe you have a more of a full-size pistol at home. Great. This is an M&P. I have this as potentially a home defense pistol. I have iron sights on it so I can shoot in the production. I just have to make sure that I only load to 15 rounds in the magazine as they have increased it now to 10 from 10 to 15. You can upgrade certain things on the gun if you want. Your sights. Um, Grip stippling's fine. You can change the barrel as long as it doesn't have porting or a compensator on it. It still keeps you in the production class. Even putting in a custom trigger isn't gonna change you over. Once you get maybe to a situation where you can either afford another gun or you wanna pursue more of a competitive aspect of it and see how high you can get your scores, grab a high-end race gun if you want. Uh, I will always recommend a CZ Shadow 2. There's a reason why you see so many people in the industry using these, because they work so damn well. This one has a few modifications to it from Cajun Gunworks. And it also has that nice little partial thumb rest for the slide release. Extended rests on the safeties, of course the optic, and trigger job, all those nice bells and whistles. This one just this guy. This guy. F but as I said, don't worry about the gun as much as just going out and having fun, following the safety rules, and not getting disqualified. You don't have to go fast. Go at your own pace and just have fun with it. Now, what gear do you absolutely need that is a requirement? Number one, hearing protection. I have a hearing protection review. I'll have a link in the description. Go check that out. This is going to make a huge difference if you have quality hearing protection. Number two, eye protection. I prefer these are called Wix, or that's the brand. Again, not sponsored or anything by these. Bought all this with my own money. This set that I got on Amazon is nice because it comes with multiple lenses. And these lenses are really quick and easy to change out. So if I'm gonna be doing an outdoor match, I can put like the sunglass lens in. And some people like to do the amber. So it also comes with an amber like shooting lens. I, I haven't ever really used this one. I just go between the clear and the shaded ones, depending on the situation. They're nice and comfortable, super easy to change the lens. Um, good quality eye protection, I feel like is a must as well. Okay, third thing you need is a holster attached to a belt. So you also need a belt. This is where things can go pretty cheap or get real expensive real quick. Uh, for your first one, I would just say uh, go with something. I used the company Blade Tech for my first rigs. Um, I'll have a link in the description as well. So they make, I'm going to say, an inexpensive product. It's not cheap because it's still built very well and it can get the job done. And they're easy to assemble. They're easy to put the mag pouches on and the holsters on. The whole system that they have around this is great for the price. It still works. I keep it as a backup just in case. Um, the holster, it's going to vary depending on what firearm you're using, but there's many different holsters in the market as well. 
This one I think is from Ghost, so it can fit the thumb ledge on my CZ. Uh, but there are much cheaper options than having something like this. I prefer to use Double Alpha Academy at this point. I just like their products better. They fit me better. Uh, and I feel like I get better performance out of their products. So Double Alpha Academy is what I'm currently using. Uh, and with most of these belts, you're going <clears> to <throat> have an inner belt as well. So this is what you'll put on first. And this is just kind of like a cheap, skinny Velcro belt. You can actually, on a lot of these, still use it as like your everyday carry belt. And most of my holsters will work just fine with this for inside the waistband carry. Uh, but this will go on first. And then the outer belt velcros in check out blade tech you can't go wrong with them for starting out in whatever division you want all right number four this one might sound weird but you need a gun sleeve a pistol sleeve at least so whatever range bag you decide to get it doesn't have to be something crazy i would suggest something a little more rigid and sturdy so it's not folding in on you but you will be required to have a gun sleeve it doesn't have to be something expensive either. It can be just super cheap. It's something that your pistol has to be able to go into that where you can take it out in the safety area. All right, some optional things. I would highly recommend at least four magazines for your pistol, especially depending on the capacity. If you're gonna be shooting production, you can only load to 15, you might be doing more reloads. If you're shooting single stack, you're definitely gonna need more magazines. Um, I always recommend at least four, but you can get by with three. Um, the mag pouches actually aren't required uh, you can put the magazines in your pocket. You want to wear cargo pants and run around with magazines bouncing all over the place. It's just not fun. It's kind of uncomfortable. I would suggest magazine pouches. They're not too curb, terribly expensive. It's worth having them on a belt. A couple other minor things. Uh, if you're going to be outside and you get sunburnt like me, sunscreen is really important or at least some kind of SPF protection shirts. Uh, I suggest good shoes. Sometimes it's muddy, sometimes it's rocky, dirty. I mean, it's just you never know the situation. I prefer to wear like some kind of hiking shoe with a pretty tough sole. A magazine speed loader. I'm gonna save your thumbs. They're cheap, get one. And another one is a magazine brush. At least where I am, there's a lot of dust, dirt, and just sometimes mud that can get into the mags when you drop them out. So I need to be able to strip the mag real quick, run a brush through it, and have the magazine clean so I can use it again in a stage, the next stage, a couple stages down the road so I don't have any failures to feed. Okay, you've decided what league you're picking, you've decided what pistol you're using, what division you're in, how do you find matches? PracticeScore.com is generally the best place. You're gonna look for clubs in your area and you'll find them posting matches and that's how you can register for them. Now, depending on the section or clubs around you, you might be required to have some kind of safety card through their training or safety classes, or maybe you just show and prove that you've been a competitive shooter in the past. If so, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Some matches will even have those safety courses before the match starts. Might say, first time shooters show up one hour before the match, we'll run you through the safety course. I will say practice scores website isn't the greatest, so it can be tricky to navigate it, but the help section and their frequently asked questions section really makes it easy after that. I have not shot a match to date that was not off of practice score. Now, some sections and clubs will have their own websites, like maybe have Facebook groups, email groups. You just have to ask around. Try and figure out how you can get into touch with these people, and then you'll also potentially get notifications when matches are canceled or when new ones are scheduled. And when you finally get out there, talk to people. Be social. Don't bug people to death, but you'll be able to tell who has experience, and do not hesitate to tell them that this is your first match. I did when I went out, I said, hey, this is my first match. I've never shot a USPSA match before. Now I've been shooting firearms for 20 years before that, but I'd never done a match. I got some of the best advice and helpful lists that just in the first few hours. And that's because people are gonna pay a little more attention to you knowing that, hey, it's your first time. They're making sure you don't do anything stupid safety-wise because they don't know you yet. And they're also gonna give you pointers that'll instantly make you a better shooter when it comes to doing these matches. Don't be ashamed. Seriously, let them know you're a first time shooter or at least a first time in a match that you have firearms experience or whatever the situation may be. Everyone I've ever encountered at these matches has been nothing but extremely helpful. Also, since you're new, try and look around. When, they're, when you see people walking a stage, maybe just kind of follow them. Or if you are curious as to why they're running out like that, ask them. Most people, especially if they know it's your first time, they will love to help you out and let you know why you're doing this step versus that step and how to make you a better shooter. And because you keep coming back 
and that means our sport grows. All right, here's the big one, cost. What's the cost? Upfront cost is where it's gonna hit you. You already have a pistol, you're looking pretty good then. Uh, obviously, production pistols, you can find used M&Ps for, what, $400? Or you could go all the way up into the $8,000 range for open guns. It's totally up to you and how you want to invest in your pistol. Magazines are the same way. You get one of those race open guns, you're looking at 100, over $100 per magazine even. So keep that in mind. Keep a budget. The soft gear isn't too terribly bad. If you're getting some of the double alpha stuff, it can get pretty pricey. So maybe just start with Blade Tech if that's what kind of budget you have. Maybe you have a huge budget and you just don't care. Get the best stuff then. Have fun with it. If you're really doing it right and you really want to succeed with this, your biggest cost should be ammo because you should be going to the range at least every week to do drills, practice, and just get your recoil control down, target transitions down. That's where your ammo or your money should be going is towards ammo and just practice, practice, practice. Now, if you've already shot your first match, maybe you had a blast and you want to find some more information how to get better. There are tons of options that you have online now even on youtube there are so many professional uspsa and competition shooters that post their own videos on youtube to help you with becoming a competitive shooter watch them train like them see what works best for you there's tons of books as well available for you also check to see if there's any pros coming locally to your area or if there's already pros locally in your area see if they're hosting training courses and classes Signing up for one of those might cost you a couple hundred dollars, but the huge benefit there is it's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, well, mostly one-on-one -on -one with a pro that can look at you and analyze how you're shooting and show you where you can improve the most, where you can save time and where you can improve your accuracy and your splits maybe. And lastly, train at home too with dry fire training if you have the opportunity. It's much easier. You don't have to go to the range. There's some products out there that I'm going to be reviewing here shortly, and we'll have that video up in the near future, I hope. Um, that shows dry fire training and those different products that are available to you without breaking the bank. Again, I appreciate you for stopping by. This was Small Arms Firearms. We're out. You can get to meet the new... Fresh reliever. Love it.